In the early 20th century, an American explorer by the name of Edward Thompson dredged a sacred cenote, which is a natural well found near the northern tip of the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico. In it, he found a 14-foot layer of blue precipitate, bowls, artifacts, and 127 skeletons. How cool is that? But why are all these artifacts and bodies in a well, and how do you create 14 feet of blue sediment that is blue for centuries now. This vibrant blue color is known as Mayan blue. It's believed to have been made around 1800 AD and it was documented to have been used into the 16th century. However, the techniques and its production has since been lost. It's found on pottery, codices, palace murals, and other artifacts made by Mayan peoples centuries ago. This color held an extremely strong significance for these agricultural peoples as it was the color of chalk, the rain god, and of human sacrifice. When the climate was dry and the skies were cloudless, much like the color Mayan blue, human sacrifices may have been painted in this color and sacrificed in hopes of rain. However, more often than human sacrifices were artifacts and pottery painted in the same color and sacrificed for the same purposes. So that would explain the contents of the well. But perhaps one of the most peculiar things is that this pigment is unusually durable, remaining vibrant after other colors have long faded away in one of the world's most harshest climates. For a long time, its chemical stability was quite a mystery. How is it able to remain virtually impervious to age, acid, weather, and even some of the world's modern solvents? It wasn't until the 1960s when chemists were able to decipher its components, the plant-based dye indigo and a mineral clay called paligorskite. The two were melded together with heat to produce pigment. Researchers found samples of the pigment to contain dehydro indigo, which is likely caused during the oxidation during the heating process of indigo, and the blue indigo actually turns to a more greenish hue when mixed with the yellow dehydro indigo, creating that signature vibrant hue. In 2008, it was proposed that pigments were made during a ritual burning of indigo leaves, paligorskite clay, along with copal incense, making the three very symbolic of the healing powers of water. Needless to say, if you have 14 feet of this pigment sitting at the bottom of your sacred well, it must have been pretty darn important. While its reputation as the human sacrifice color may be taken a little differently and dramatized in movies or cartoons, but it's interesting to wonder, had it not survived all these hundreds of years, would we have known how significant this color was? And for all the other civilizations where the pigments were not able to survive, what colors were important to them, and what did their statues and murals look like when they were painted? We may never know, but for today I hope you learned something new. If you liked this video, you might want to check out my last strange history of the color mummy brown. That one is also a very good human dead people color. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time.